Hello everybody and welcome to another product review video and today we are going to be talking about the Vallejo model wash uh, series. Now this is a big series of washes. Now you'll notice right on here it says uh, for all types of armor or for gray armor or what does this one say for gray and dark vehicles. <laughs> okay so I initially looked into these because I was wondering if they had other applications beyond vehicles and I've been uh, very happy with them and what they do so I wanted to share them with everybody um, understanding that there are also some challenges so first let's talk about what they are so they're actually designed they're, as I said they're from Vallejo um, they come in these rather large uh, containers these are 35 milliliters they're about you know nine or ten dollars a piece depending on where you get them from you can get them a little cheaper some places a little more expensive others you know depending on if you're ordering from like ebay amazon a local game store that has good prices whatever um now ideally what they're for is for doing all types of weathering on vehicles i have four here i think there's a maybe 20 in the total range i honestly don't know there's a lot of colors um, and you, there's all sorts of different effects, like this one here, this oiled earth, it will basically make a dark, grimy, earthy texture on your model. Um, the, uh, this one right here, which is the blue-gray, will sort of give a slight blue-gray dull color to something. Uh, so it can sort of look dusted out or like a blued metal or something like that. Um, and then these two, the light and dark gray, I'm always interested in ways to move uh, tint and shade around, and these two are rather interesting. So what I was curious about them and why I wanted to try them was I wondered if they could be used at all like normal washes on normal vehicles, or sorry, on normal models, how would they interact, that kind of thing. So I've got our friendly ogre here, you may remember from a previous video where we talked about uh, doing extreme highlighting on gold. That's if you're interested in how we achieve these effects, that's back in a previous video. But we're gonna use him for an example for this. And I have actually found this range to be quite useful, but with some significant limitations. Um, and so let's kind of get into it. The first thing I'll say is that there are, as I said, there's a lot more colors than what I have here. Uh, some of them look very interesting and I'm keen to try them, I just haven't gotten them yet. Um, there are things that do like white dust and different color like reds and stuff like that. So if you want to have a vehicle driving across like a Martian landscape or having like sand that's gotten up on it, that kind of thing. And I think they would nail it because the texture effects of these are really interesting. The biggest challenge to using most of them is that since they tend to be full of like actual sort of pigment, like if we look at the side there, you can see how much that's, let's scoot this over here you can see how much that's separated there. So you have to put, you can probably hear that. There you go. You have to put agitators in these. That's number one. Immediately put some agitators in there. Um, I use, uh, for my agitators, I use lead shot, like what you would normally use to make shotgun shells. Uh, it's lead, so I mean, don't lick your paint, I guess. Um, but it's, uh, it's, you know, obviously you want to use something that's non, um, uh, that won't rust. Never use anything iron based, ferrous. There we go. So I put it, you put an agitator in and you can see all that's gone. Now, the trick is these will separate, you know, at a decent rate. So, uh, you, you want to shake them up and give them a good use before you use them. Uh, I'll put a little bit of the uh, this oiled earth over here on my palette so you can see exactly what happens. Okay. So what you get is something that looks... Let me see if I can actually get this in the shot. A lot like mud, right? Like wet mud. You can see it running there. Okay. Now, this one has a rather interesting effect. Uh, I will... Which I will show you. So the oiled earth, when you spread it out, it immediately looks very dirty. Okay? It's these are very, very thin. And it's a great way to do like I'm gonna put it on his I understand his pants, I don't actually have any color. 
but I'm just going to kind of spread it around here a little. And I'm going to let it dry as I talk about the other colors because the end effect is actually rather interesting. So we're just going to get his feet. You can see when it goes on, it's very transparent. Okay. So I'm going to be very heavy with it. Now, because it is, all of these are very, very liquidy, the other interesting thing about them is that they do mix in with other colors. Now, for the ones with heavier pigment and texture, you really want to watch that because you're going to turn your paint chalky or something like that. But the one that I love above all the others and the one that I'm going to actually separate out. So this review is going to be a little different because I think this range, not every color is equal. For example, and we'll let that dry. The blue gray I found to be more or less worthless. Um, it dries way too chalky. I don't know what it's trying to represent. Uh, I don't like it. It's supposed to tint armor blue. Um, there are better ways to do that through glazes and stuff like that that don't make it look chalky and worn. I guess if you were going for like really a particular kind of aged steel, um, perhaps, but and all in all, I didn't like this one. I very much like the light gray um, because it's a really interesting color. The problem with the light gray is that it is so prone to separation. Um, this one just breaks apart very, very fast. That being said, um, if you're willing to put up with that, I actually really like what you can do with it because it, unlike some of the other uh, washes that are out there, it truly is light gray, which is... It's not really a common color you get in washes. I'll put, I put that one on my wet palette, so let's scoot that over. Like, if you can see that, I know that's really reflective. I'm sorry. Let's see if I can get to There we go. You can see it's, it actually is more of a lighter gray color. And when it, this one's the, the light gray right here. Okay. And then just for future reference, I'd already put some of the dark on my palette. You can see that looks like oil, like black ink. I promise you that's not how it turns out, though. But you can just watch. Like, look how fast that's separating right now, right? I, now, given it's on a wet palette, so it's being watered while that's happening, which isn't helping the cause any. Okay. But I like the light gray because it's very interesting to mix into other paints. Its effect, you can see, I'll, like, I'll put it directly over this model, just like right on his back. I mean, that effect is extremely minimal, right? So it's an interesting way to get some very, very, very slight. If you're looking at moving a color just slightly, or you're looking at something like a gray glaze where you want to bring things in line, it can be a pretty good use for that. So I like that one. Um, that oiled earth is still drying. We'll come back to it soon. But the one for me that's the, that's the must have, like if I was going to go back and tell you, hey, here's one of these you should get. The one you absolutely, that, that I think is, is just fantastic and, and has become a staple part of my modeling, get rid of all the rest of them, is this guy right here. Dark gray. This is one of the best wash products I have ever used. Okay? So, first of all, it is very thin. And it's also very liquid. Which means that you can line really well with it. One of the big things that, that I really like is, you know, and, and sort of that you have to do with a lot of models is you got to go in there and get liner on them. You know, you got to get these lines darkened. And you can see, I'm just literally touching the brush to this, this crack, this tiny little crack in his pants. And what happens is it flows right in there. I mean, you can see how much more that's called out. I didn't trace each one. I just touched the brush to it, and it flowed right in. Okay. You can see it doing it on my thumb, as a matter of fact. Look at that. I mean, you, that right there is proof in the pudding. Look how it traced out, like, the cracks in my skin, right? Um, so for this reason, this has become an absolute essential product to me. Uh, I love it for doing things like we have this scar here. You want to trace that. Let me just give that a light touch. Something like that. You gotta be careful. You wanna use a thinner brush for this. I'm using a brush that might be a bit too big for it. So 
So especially if you're doing, say, science fiction figures that maybe have lines in armor and you're painting in like a Geralda style where you start with your airbrush and then you need to black line everything, okay? Um, it becomes really easy. Now, the other great part about this is that it shades really well. At the same time, you know, you can use it as a liner, but when it's really intense is only when it's really together, okay? I can also just take it and I just use it, you can just use it to shade. And you can see it looks fairly dark right here, right? So look at how dark that is as I put that on the bottom of his tush. I like that word. It's a funny word. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of hit all these shadows with this darker color. Now, you saw how dark that was when it goes on. Let's let that dry for a minute, okay? Um, and while that's drying, I'm going to talk about the other thing I use this for. The other thing I use this for is to shade down my colors. Uh, because one of the things that I find that you want to do is when you're working in sort of high contrasts, you want to create very dark versions of, of a color and very light versions of a color. So in, in general, you can add an off-white. But the problem with adding a lot of grays, uh, well, for, first of all, the problem with darkening a color, period, is that if you use black, it tends to get really black really fast, okay? Like, black is such a dominant color. But because this is not black, it's dark gray, and it's naturally very thin, it works so well with almost any color. So uh, let's do something completely insane here that I'll paint over later whenever I finish this guy. But uh, let's grab some, some magenta, okay? That's a crazy color. Apparently this ogre just suddenly converted to Slanesh. So I'm just going to do part of his shield here real quick with this. I don't need to do the whole thing, I just need to give you an example. So there you can see we have turned his shield magenta. Nothing too shocking so far. Okay? Now, if I wanted to darken, say, the lower part of this here, right, to bring that down into shadow, I can take a little of my magenta, mix it with just a little bit of my shade here, on my palette, and what I get is a wonderful darker version. You can see it's very subtle what happens there, right? And the best part is I can just keep bringing in smaller and smaller amounts or, or re-glazing it on. It almost, it just so naturally glazes your paints because, because it itself is so thin, right? So not only does it thin your paints as it gives you this darker color, but it also provides a wonderful contrast that's not too overwhelmingly dark, which is always my problem with just mixing in black, right? So what I get, I could even go up to straight this color at the end if I wanted. Now, now that that's completely dried down there, look at how light that is. See how subtle the effect is, right? That's why this is so good, because even though on your palette it looks very black, right, like black ink, in point of fact, it actually dries fairly light unless it's real thick. So it responds to how thin it is very, very accurately. Look inside these, again, around these little loops where that's, you know, pretty jet black, right? Um, but out here where I spread it out, just nice and darker gray. Same thing on the shield. Right? You can see original magenta up here moves down into the, the lower color very nice. And because of that, I could also just keep applying additional layers once it's dry, which it's not really yet, and get it even darker. So it works great as a, a sort of semi-dark glaze to shade things down. Uh, I've even found I don't hate it when I'm just trying to do a base coat for a gray thing. Like, for example, let's say I wanted to melt, make his belt that color. It's just so smooth and easy to paint with. So between being an awesome liner, between being a great shade color just on its own, like a pretty decent wash, um, and then 
being able to be mixed into other paints to create these great effects, this one has become my new favorite uh, by far. Okay. Overall, I don't actually tend to use it in the way you might use, say, a Nuln Oil, like just, you know, kind of spreading it all over the model. I find it's uh, not as much suited to that. I find its actual uses are in lining, in sort of pre-shading, or, or shading afterward in a targeted way, right? Where, like, if this guy's skin was already painted and I wanted to really darken the recesses, or I wanted to really cut the edge of that where the chainmail is and create, like, the illusion of a shadow, right, underneath, that I can do that really well because it dries this perfect gray shadow color. Uh, even though it looks so dark when you initially put it on, it dries quite transparent and ends up looking very much like a natural shadow. Like again, you can see where that's already drying underneath there and how smooth and subtle that effect is. Okay? Again, there you go. So, those are the Vallejo model washes. Uh, summary. Uh, I'd say if you're looking for some interesting, if you like to work in glazes or, or very thin layers or stuff like that, uh, give them a look. Um, there's some interesting stuff in here. If you're doing weathering on big vehicles, playing a lot of sci-fi, then I think really give them a look. Like That's where they're honestly meant to be and, and where they excel. Uh, if you're just doing normal, say, fantasy miniature painting, I would say most of them you could probably give a pass to. The one I would say is worth and stands above all the rest for all of us is this Vallejo model wash for gray and dark vehicles, dark gray. I cannot explain how much I love this. I've used this on pretty much every model that I've painted since I discovered it in some way or another. It is my, it has become my every model thing. It's, it's as I use it as much as primer, honestly. Um, oh, and we never talked about the drying earth, sorry. So you can see how that dried on there. It's just a very dull, chalky brown. You can get some interesting effects placing it on different colors. It does tend to, to chalk up some uh, to leave residue, like you can see there. It just stains. Um, it's great if you're doing like running. So the, the oiled earth is great if you're doing like running water. You wanna do like, uh, say you got the side of a vehicle and you've got, you wanna have the effect of water that has run down the side of it and then dried. That's exactly what really it's meant for. Um, again, not as common a thing in fantasy. So overall, I give the range a solid B. That being said, the Vallejo Dark Gray, which I'll call out separately, uh, is, is really an A+. I would highly recommend you to go out and, you know, spend the 8 to $10 to add just this one to your collection. For the rest of them, give them a look if you're doing, uh, you know, a lot of either heavy weathering or science fiction vehicles or stuff like that. So, there you go. That's the Vallejo Model Wash Series review. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, as always, appreciate you watching. Uh, like it if you like it. Give us a subscribe if you would like to do that. And as always, we'll see you next time.